Hi, welcome to a video that's going to show you how to use Excel to calculate margin and also short sell. Now, let's start with the margin. And these concepts come from chapter three. So the idea is, let's build a template to help analyze the aspects of a marginal trade position. So if we bring equity of, of 10,000 into play, so we want to invest 10,000 and we want to utilize our margin account. So if the initial equity position is going to be stated at 50%, that means we could borrow 50% of the total transaction. So how we could do that is to calculate it. We could say B4, which is the initial equity position, divided by B10, the equity initial equity percentage. And then we're just going to subtract the initial equity. So this would give us, um, so our total position is actually going to be 20,000. 10,000 we're bringing, 10,000 we're borrowing. So if the initial stock price is going to be 50,000, then I would, the way I would calculate the purchase shares would be my, my equity, the amount of money I contributed, plus the amount of money I borrowed, divided by the amount of outstanding share, the share price for each individual outstanding share. So this would give me 4,000 shares, 400 shares. Okay, this formula is a little different, but that's how I would calculate it. So now it's saying that, so this is the initial, when it says initial, it means the beginning, per, the beginning purchase price of the stock, as this is the initial equity or the initial money I put into the transaction. So because I leveraged 50% of the total transaction, so the total transaction is going to be 20,000. So let me just call this total invested dollars. So this would be the total invested dollars. So if I took the 20,000 divided by 50, I get my 400 shares. So what happens if the stock price goes down to 40? And now this stock is going to pay a dividend during our holding period of 50 cents a share. So I'll come to play later. And our margin maintenance percentage is 30%. So that means that if the stock falls to the point where our, our equity becomes 30% of the transaction, we're going to have to inject more equity in the position or there'd be a margin call. Rate of um, margin alone is 8%. So we're going to pay 8% on this 10,000 and the holding period is six months. Okay, so let's first cap calculate the capital gain on the stock. So I would take the number of outstanding shares and I want to multiply that by the initial price minus the closing price. Uh, actually, the other way around. Closing price minus initial stock price. Okay, so here we're going to lose $4,000. And that makes sense because the stock went down by $10 and we have 400 shares. So dividends, as far as the dividends I receive because I own the stock while it, at the time it pays dividends would simply be the amount of shares multiplied by the dividend rate. The interest on the loan. So interest is what? I owe on the loan. So that's going to be, we're going to start with the loaned amount of money and we're going to multiply that by the interest, the, um, actually we'll take the holding period divided by 12 first and then we'll multiply by the rate of interest because the, we're only holding it for six months, so we wouldn't pay the full 800, only 400, which is six months worth of interest. Okay, so our net income is gonna be the capital gain, or loss, in this case a loss, plus the dividends I received, minus what I paid on the margin, interest. So the total net income here is gonna be, and I should really put this net income slash loss and this would be capital gain slash loss 
since this is an example of a loss situation. Here's my initial investment from here. So my return on investment is simply going to be my net loss divided by my initial investment, or 42%. So if we want to do, first we want to figure out margin based on the ending stock price. Okay. So based on this 40% stock price, what's my current margin position? So when you can calculate a margin position, it gives you a percentage of your equity that's still left in the transaction. So what we want to, how we want to calculate this is we want to reflect the ending, ending position of the value of the stock we have. So that's going to be the shares times the ending stock price. And we're going to minus from that the amount of money we borrowed. And we're going to divide that by, again, the stock price times the ending shares. Okay. So, and this should give us, oops, I need another parenthesis there. And I need to edit this formula because Excel, I wanted the parenthesis to be here. And take that one away. Okay, that's correct. Okay, so we went from a margin position of 50% down to 37% because the stock price fell. So how this kind of lays out is Whenever the stock price falls, <clears throat> your margin or equity position is going to be a smaller percentage of the total uh, remaining uh, position of the stock price times the outstanding shares. Now we want to figure out when um, price when the stock margin call occurs. So we want to figure a stock price that we have to worry about because that's when they're going to ask for more equity. So to do this, we're going to take B5, the amount borrowed. And we're going to divide that by B7 minus B11, the margin maintenance percentage, times B7, the outstanding shares. Okay, so this shows us that the, if the stock price falls to $35, we're going to face a margin call. So it's at 40, so not quite there yet. So return on stock without margin. So we know that re the return on the investment with margin was a negative 42%, but what if we didn't have the margin? So in that case, we would take B8 minus B6. Add to that B9. and divide by B6. So we only have a 19% return, a negative 19% return without margin. So you can see how margin amplified the losses here. And you can look over here for a little bit for um, a, this scale here, which will kind of chart out the different positions of the stock price and the results of return with re margin and with no margin. Okay, if we go back over here, and you can always use this template if you wanted to change, say the beginning, the ending share price, say it went up to $80 a share. Now we have a whole different set of circumstances. And we have a much bigger return with margin and a lesser return without margin. So this could always be used as a template to solve uh, a number of problems in the, from the textbook. Okay, let's move on to short selling. So in short selling, this is where we sell the stock first before, before we buy it back. And we're able to do this because the broker will just sell someone else's shares to simulate our short position, even though we don't own the stock. So with equities, you're able to, through your broker, and you can do this because the broker has all the shares of stock in the street name. So they're able to just borrow someone else's stock to sell. <clears throat> now the other person doesn't know it and you have to maintain your position, enough equity in your position to maintain the short. But the idea here is if the stock price is falling, you could sell short in order to 
um, uh, capitalize on falling stock prices. So here we're saying initial investment of 50,000 and the stock price is $100 per share. So how do we get to 1,000 um, shares of stock? So uh, what we're gonna do here is we're gonna say B4, which is gonna be initial investment, divided by your margin position. So it's basically gonna represent that you can borrow half of your money on this. And we divide by the outstanding shares. And it'll show that we have 1,000 shares. Now, if we didn't do margin, we would only have 500 shares. But since we're borrowing half the amount, basically what we're doing here is we take the 50,000 divided by <clears throat> the margin percentage, we get 100,000. So that's the total value of the investment. 50% our money, 50% borrowed money. So the ending stock price is at 70, no dividends, and our margin maintenance is 30%. So this is good. If it's a short position and the stock price fell, we're gonna make money. So if we take the number of shares, multiplied by, in this case, initial stock price minus ending stock price, we get a return capital gain of $30,000. Now, zero dividends because there's no dividends. And, and if you sell short, you don't really are gonna earn any dividends because you don't really have any stock. So the net income Now, if you did have dividends, you would actually owe the dividends because the stock is sold short. That's why we minus them from the total. Okay, so the initial investment was 50,000. What's the return on investment? 30,000 divided by 50. So it's gonna be a 60% return because, we, because we're only looking at our initial, initial equity or investment, even though the total value of the security is 100,000. We only put 50,000 up, so we're getting a 60% return if we make 30,000. So let's look at the margin price, the margin based on the ending price. So for this formula in a, a short position, let's just make this field a little bigger. Okay. We're going to take the initial investment and we're going to add that to the initial stock price times the amount of outstanding shares minus any dividends paid minus the um, number of shares times the ending stock price and then we're going to divide by number of shares times the ending stock price. So you need to count the one, two, three, and we have one, two, okay, so. Missing. Just open up the field a bit so I can see the entire formula. And you just gotta make sure the, the parentheses are lined up so you should always have the same number on the left as the right. So here, one, two, three, four, and then on the right, one, two, three, four. So that should work. Okay. Yes, 114% was the margin. And that's because the margin is now higher than where we started at because the value of the position is higher. And if we look at the call price, the price at which we'd have to inject more equity to maintain the position. Okay. Start with the initial investment again. And this is you know very similar to the above formula in the beginning because we have to calculate the ending price And you know the starting price. Minus the dividend. And then divide by initial number of shares times 
one plus the margin maintenance percentage. Okay, so if the stock price ever rose to 115, then we our margin would shrink to 30% and we'd have to inject more equity to maintain the, tr the transaction. Okay, so in the spreadsheet, besides the two examples you could try, there's also a fully filled out examples uh, with some commented text that you can read over to help you understand these models a little bit better. Um, and you can always use these models to change the initial values in these models if you want to uh, change the initial uh, equity percentage, maybe drop that to 45% or 35%. But generally, you can't, these equity stock equity positions, the maximum margin percentage is gonna be 50 initially as set by the Federal Reserve. Okay, thanks for your time and I hope this helped clarify margin and short selling. Take care.